Well, good morning again. Today we're going to start out by putting this air cleaner on. We dump a little bit of oil in this bike and then uh, I think we'll maybe start assembling the fairing. First things first, we're going to put a little red Loctite on the three studs that hold the backing plate to the throttle body. Run these studs in there. Keep those studs tight. You're going to throw your gasket on there. I'm going to test fit the backing plate. You want to make sure when you push the backing plate, there's no gap between the backing plate and the head. And this one sits nice and flush. The O-rings that go on the back here, it's hard to hold them in place. So you like to use a little anaerobic flange sealant, put a little dot on there. Any excess you can wipe off and that'll hold those O-rings in place. Same thing with the front. Requires two O-rings, a little anaerobic flange sealant to hold them in place. Banjo bolts, slide the washer on, a little bit of red Loctite on those, and just run them into the heads loosely. Put a little Loctite in your standoff bolts for your air cleaner and run them on the three studs we ran in earlier. Once you've got your standoff bolts tight, which are about five foot pounds, I think the instructions say. Then you want to tighten up these ones, and I think that's about 12. Now we're ready to put our air filter on. Line up your holes, the three standoff bolts. Get a little glue Loctite on your three bolts. And run your bolts in there. Then you can put your lid back on, but we're not going to put our lid back on yet because we still have to wait and hook up our throttle cables. We've got our air filter on there. We're going to dump our oil in, Amsoil 2050 V-Twin for the engine only. I get people ask me all the time about oils. And we use ATF, Amsoil Blue ATF in the primary, or you can use an older Type F ATF. The reason we use ATF is because ATF has more detergents, meaning you'll have a longer clutch life, less slippage, and uh, ATF is also a little bit thinner, so that in the morning when you start out with your bike, it doesn't drag on the clutch plates, and uh, it doesn't bang into gear like it does with 2050 engine oil, which is way too thick. And then in the transmission, we run a 75 140 severe gear synthetic oil with zinc additive for the transmission and then obviously this is what we run in the engine i like to run three separate oils in my bikes because uh, each engine transmission and primary is all separate compartments so why not run oil specific instead of running engine oil in all three holes also that way if you develop an engine leak or a tranny leak or a primary leak all you need to do is smell or taste the oil and you're going to know right away what it is that's leaking so try it guys so you'll be happy switching to uh, oil specific for the hole that it's intended for while we're here we're going to throw a brand new chrome oil filter on here i'm not going to torque that one up too tight yet because uh, i still have to pull the voltage regulator off on this side, we're going to pop these spark plugs out. We're going to install an NGK DCPR7E spark plug, gap to about 28 or 30, with a little nickel anti seize on the threads. All right, next step is assembling this interference with all our gauges. Lay this on a nice cloth here. We're going to assemble this fairing with new mounts from Alloy Art. All these 2013 and earlier mounts are always broken. You can see here, you can see here it's broken at the top, and you can see here halfway down it's also cracked. These things are garbage, and these are a great upgrade from Alloy Art. These will never break do is <clears throat> install our new mounts from Alloy Art. They come with all the new hardware, stainless steel. Next thing we're going to do is install 
our neutral and uh, indicator lights green from the front into the back. And you can actually put this in there upside down if you try really hard, but if you look, while you're doing it, there's a little tab that falls into the fairing and to the light fixture, so in theory you can't put it in upside down. There's a cigarette lighter, which is a two-piece socket in from the front, socket on the back, tighten that up, and on the CVO inner fairing you're going to have two rubber grommets, one for your clutch and one for your brake. Now we're going to take our gauges and install them from the front through. The speedometer will be on the left, RPM gauge on the right. Fuel is going to be your top left gauge, sorry. On this side is top left, we're doing everything backwards. And underneath is going to be your ambient air temperature. Oil is your right lower. And your voltage is your right upper. Now we're going to take these Rockford Fosgate TMS 6 SG speakers and install them. They are tapered so that they angle towards the rider. So make sure you put them in properly. My dad told me this once years ago. Anytime you're putting a screw back into plastic that's been used once already, turn it to the left once until you feel the threads drop in. You feel the threads drop in, then you're not cutting new threads every time in your plastic hole and wearing out the hole. You can only screw a hole so many times before it's worn out. Now we're going to take our Rockford Fosgate TMX HD 9813 media receiver head unit. It's Bluetooth, blah, blah, blah. It's got everything. More power than your stock head unit, so that alone and the better equalizer in this unit will make your speaker sound better. We're going to slide that into place just so we can see where our mounts from Alloy Art go. You've got your mounts in and your deck slid in place. We're going to put our four long stainless steel Allen head bolts in on each side. Now that we've got our head unit mounted in there, everything's solid. We're going to put our uh, alloy arc speaker mounts, outer fairing mounts, braces, whatever you want in there. Lower outer screws, you want to make sure you're real careful putting them in. You want to make sure your screws are the right length. Because if they're not, they're going to come through the other side. Anytime we have a fairing apart for paint or if the molding's been glued on, I just ordered a set brand new from Harley and it pushes on real nice, fits perfect. So, the Rockford Media Unit radio also has a USB. You can charge your phone and you can uh, plug it in for music or you stick a USB stick in there, whatever. For this bike, we're going to have leather pouch on the front here. So what we're going to do is drill a small hole here in the bottom and run this cord up through the leather pouch in there so you can put your phone or a USB stick in there. Well, now if you were smart when you took this apart, you labeled where some of these connectors went. We're going to put our main harness back into this. Now that you've got all your wires pulled through, we're going to zip tie them into place on our main mounts on our uh, RPM and speedometer gauge here. And we're going to uh, plug everything back in. All our connections, we're going to use a little dielectric grease to keep the water out. So, we're going to put this mounting plate in here for this Rockford Fosgate amp as well. Put that plate in there. You need to put your two little studs in there. And then that'll mount in there like that. This is what your mounting plate will look like. The main plate, bracket on the front, two studs on the back, and then your amp mounted down. And it just slides right in there. It's all made to work together. Purpose-built audio. You get your switches mounted in your dash. Once again, this is used plastic. So when you get your screws in there, make sure you turn them to the left first until you feel your threads drop in and then start tightening up. That way you don't wreck your plastic holes. <coughs> so now this is what our cockpit's going to look like. 
but this thing's also getting a radar front and rear and a jammer front and rear. So we've got to figure out, I don't like mounting these lights just on top. I like drilling a little hole somewhere and mounting this in from the inside. I think we're going to see how much room we either have here on the back or we'll probably put them here. I think between the speaker and the top gauges, drill a nice hole in and glue them from the back side in. But make sure when you drill your holes, you measure three, four, or ten times before you drill it. Because once it's drilled, it's drilled. So I've drilled my holes a little bit smaller than the light needs to be. And I'm going to take a file. I'm going to file that out. And I'm not going to go in and out. I'm only going to push my file in one direction. It's going to take a little longer. But when you do that, you ensure that you don't peel any paint off the surface. All right, that's pretty much it for our cockpit. Here you can see you have your, our indicator lights. One of them is gonna be for the radar, which is the right one. The left one is gonna be for the jammer. And then this is the controller for the jammer, so you can switch it to jammer or parking sensor mode. It's mounted. Most of this is gonna be hidden by the fuel tank, but you're gonna be able to see your light, whether it's blue or red. So we're gonna leave that like that for now. Let the glue dry up. Uh, once we get our handlebars on, we're going to mount the fairing and then finish wiring the amplifier and all the speakers into the bike. Now we're going to throw back together our uh, primary with the new charging system. comes with an encapsulated rotor so your magnets don't come loose. Brand new 50 amp three phase stator so you're making lots of power even at idle cruising around town with your stereo cranked up showing off for the girls. Oh boys, new voltage regulator, new bolts, and uh, yeah, let's get the old voltage regulator popped out, because it's always good to change them as a set, and we'll put this back together. You have your voltage regulator out, have a real good look at your front engine mount. This one is torn in half, so we're going to replace it while we're here, I guess. This is the old front engine mount. Man, that's pretty bad. That's supposed to be one piece. So we're gonna replace this front motor mount that was shot with a brand new Glide Pro motor mount. Really nice setup. Now that we've got our motor mount replaced, before we put our new voltage regulator in, we're gonna install our stator. Put a little soapy water on this uh, seal before you pull it through. That'll help you. I prefer to use soapy water instead of oil. Because if you use oil, Oil stays slippery. Soap will dry up and get sticky and allow your seal to do what it's supposed to do. Carefully pulling on your wire. Pull that wire through. And you want to put your uh, stator bolts in and it's preferred to use new ones. Put some Loctite on them, even if they came with Loctite and you're going to torque them to 75 inch pounds. Now I know this one's good but it's good practice to stick a straight edge and lay it across your engine spacer coming out off the crank. And go all the way around and make sure that that straight edge doesn't touch the stator anywhere. Then we're going to take a new voltage regulator, put a little dielectric grease on these connectors and put that back on and then put our clips on our wires. The clips on your wires will hold those uh, connectors together. Now that we've got our new voltage regulator in, we're gonna go back to the other side and finish tightening up our oil filter from earlier. Well, thanks for watching guys and girls. I guess the end of the day caught up to me a little earlier than I expected. Tomorrow we'll finish up the primary and uh, we'll see what kind of parts show up and uh, we'll go from there. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my videos, share them with your friends. Uh, you know, the bigger that the community gets on YouTube, the more fun we can have together. And uh, if you got any questions, just leave loop it in the bottom there. And uh, thanks.